YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So it has occurred to me and I've recently been reminded by one of my uh, my viewers that I haven't posted a video in a while. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I just, I don't know, I just haven't felt inspired to. Um, I don't know, there hasn't been any topics that I've been um, really wanting to address on, on my channel lately. Um, even though there's lots of stuff going on in the world and everything, but I just, I guess I'm just trying to stay away from that stuff. Um, politics and all that stuff, just, I don't know. Um, I've had, as, as most of you, if you've been watching my channel, know I've had enough ne negativity in the last year of my life and, you know, I just, I'm just trying to avoid all of that. But I thought I'd just kind of uh, update you guys and just do kind of a rambling musings of of things and what's going on with me and, and, and things. And yes, I'm still alive, so <laughs> I'm still here. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I've had some cool things going on. Um, I finally got a, uh, a deck built in my backyard and um, I'll, I'll throw up some... Uh, um, some images while while I'm while I'm talking about it, but it's something that my husband and I had wanted to do since we first bought this house four years ago, was to get a deck. All we had was uh, just a cement stoop, so you had the sliding door and you just walk out and then you have like a step and then just kind of a cement square, and that was all we had in the backyard besides just grass and rocks and things. And so um, one of the things we really wanted, one, we wanted a deck, and two, we kind of needed one because right now, or not right now, but at the, when we moved in, we put this insert for a dog door into our sliding door, um, and it's a small, smaller size sliding door. It's, much, it was, it's about half the size of the sliding door we had at the old house, and so it ended up with like a really narrow um, um, opening to get through the sliding door to get out to the backyard. So we wanted to get rid of that insert. In order to get rid of the insert, we needed to put a dog door in the wall. Um, and I'll have some photos of that too. Um, and so in order to do that, in order for, for the dog door to go into the wall, I, we kind of needed a deck to be set up so that the dog, so the dogs could get through the door and walk um, onto the deck and things, um, because otherwise it was just a sheer drop down to the rocks and it was about five, no, not five feet, about three feet, three or four feet up from the rocks up to where the dog would have to be, and so that's too high for the dogs to jump down. And yeah, we could have maybe put a ramp in, and eh, but we really wanted the deck anyway. Well, we never got around to it, and then, of course, you know, his passing last year and everything else. It, it, so I kind of had to deal with that last year. But um, I actually started the process about a year ago where I reached out to the contractor for building the deck. I knew it was going to take at least a year because he would have been booked up for last summer already anyway. And, and I was right. So um, they finally were able to start construction um, in April. And, and so our late March, early April, and it was finally, finally early April when it was finally um, built. And as, as you saw from the photos, um, I think it turned out really, really nice. Um, I designed it differently than the way my husband wanted it. <laughs> he and I were having trouble agreeing in terms of how we wanted to have it done. And um, his, his design ended up having uh, ended up being a lot more expensive than what I ended up getting. Um, I, I won't go into numbers and things, but uh, my uh, my my deck is about, was about ten thousand dollars less than what he would have wanted. So, uh, or, or the design he wanted. So anyway, um, <laughs> I think it looks great, and and it's it's just perfect for what I want and everything. And eventually, I want to um, add to it, not add to the deck itself, but I want to put in um, a little. Um, outdoor kitchen um, system, uh, not nothing big or fancy, um, just the kind where you have the grill and then you've got um, kind of like with, with stonework around it, and you have maybe a little sink um, and a little uh, and, a, and a prep area and a little mini fridge or something. Um, so that kind of a, kind of a thing, and I'm going to put that on the one side of the house um, on the deck, and uh, that's going to be really good. And because of the, where my gas fireplace is, it's literally right by the sliding door. And so it'll be really easy to run a gas line from the house out to the gas grill. So I don't have to deal with propane and things. So that's going to be nice. So that's one of the things I want to do. Not this year. This year was 
just getting the deck built and it's there and it's nice and I've been using it. Um, I actually got some nice patio furniture that you saw in the photos and I actually got those off of a friend of mine um, for a really steep discount, which was really great. Um, so that was, that was nice, so I've got that going. So that was kind of a nice thing to happen this year is just to kind of, you know, do some improvements on the house and things. Um, I have a lot of things I'd like to get done on the house. I, I'd love to get the basement finished. Um, I'm not happy with how my fireplace is set up and I'd love to redo that, but that's going to be expensive and uh, that's going to wait. That's low priority. I'm going to have I have to set my priorities and things. I think one of the big things next on my list is just going to be landscaping. Um, I've been doing a little bit here and there. Um, I got some brand new bushes put into my front yard. I got rid of the old bushes that we had. I had um, bushes that um, the um, builders put in and I didn't like the type of bushes they selected or the placement of how they how they put them in. Um, I, I thought it was, um, I don't know, it was kind of haphazard and random and it, it wasn't aesthetically pleasing at all um, for my taste. So um, I selected some completely new bushes. Um, I got double flowering plums and Barberries? Burberries? I forget exactly how they're... I think they're Barberry is, is the name of it. They're, they got these really nice red leaves. Um, they're kind of thorny, uh, but they look really pretty. And so I've kind of got those uh, going in the front yard. Um, the backyard right now, I don't have a lot going on other than just rocks and grass, but I do have a rose bush that I bought um, and I, I still uh, need to get planted. But that's going to be in honor of my husband. Um, at our old house, we had some rose bushes and uh, he was very, very proud of his rose bushes, and he was very happy with, with, the, with the red blooms that he would get every year. And so that's one reason why I always had wanted to get a rose bush, at least one, um, because I knew it was something that he really enjoyed at the old house. Um, and so this kind of like is in, in his honor is getting a rose bush. So that's my first uh, plant. But I need to get a drip system put in place um, in the rocks around the deck. Uh, first and then once I get that drip system in I will have more bushes and I, there's a I'd love to get a tree as well um, I need to get one that doesn't grow out too wide um, it kind of stays up and, and doesn't get too big so I'm trying to get um, there's a lot of different varieties of trees out there that kind of stay small and that kind of thing so that's what I'm looking at uh, mostly fruit trees that kind of thing something that'll be pretty and flowering in the springtime so that's going to be something for probably next year is get the tree in um, start selecting some bushes I might not put all the bushes in right away because I'd love to get a lot of bushes and things all the way around the backyard um, and where the rocks are and things um, in, in some areas, I'd like to get them to discourage my dog from attacking the fence. Because <laughs> uh, I love my doggies, I really do. But Joey, um, we have a we have a, a neighbor, um, and they have this little tiny puff ball of a of a dog. Um, it's literally half the size of my cat. My cat weighs about twelve pounds. This dog weighs six pounds. <laughs> so, literally half the size of my cat. Little puff ball named Bruiser, of course. Um, and he's out there yip yapping away and then Joey just kind of goes into a tizzy and just starts trying to claw through the fence to get to him. That's like, okay. And there's, there really is literally, I mean, other than, you know, yelling at Joey, which I do, I'm like, hey, stop, please. <laughs> okay, I don't say it that way, but I'm not going to yell my actual stuff right now because it'll confuse the poor guy. Um, but anyway, so I, I you know, I, I, I stop him as soon as I, as I hear him doing it, but... There's big, big gouges in the fence and everything, and so if I if I get some nice, I'm thinking of actually planting some more Burberries back there with the nice big thorns on them, um, and hopefully that'll discourage Joey from getting too close to the fence on that side of the yard because <laughs> he's he's a silly puppy. I mean, he's he, both of the dogs are really really good, really really well behaved. I don't have to crate them. They don't chew anything in the house. They don't destroy anything. Um, and they, because the dog door, they have, you know, 24 seven access to the backyard and things. I mean, I still walk them and stuff, but if they have to pee, they, they don't have to wait for me to take them out to pee. Um, and, and stuff. So, I mean, um, overall, generally amazingly well-behaved dogs, but Lexi likes to bark. Um, not constantly, but she does definitely bark more than, than her brother. And then Joey's got his little fence attacking 
habit. <laughs> so, but as far as dogs go, that's pretty well behaved because there really are no other negative um, behavior problems with either of them. Um, so that's, you know, I'm pretty lucky about that. So obviously I've also mentioned the fact that I wrote a novel a couple years ago and yes, I'm still editing it. I am in the final um, phase of editing where I'm, I'm kind of doing, I've, I've done all the editing um, from the last round of, of feedback I got from um, my friends who've been helping me uh, with the story and everything. And so now I'm doing one final uh, editing um, round just by myself, just like, okay, I, I did the editing um, in terms of uh, taking into account all the feedback I got and like making changes and tweaks and things based on that feedback. And now I'm kind of going through and checking for consistency issues, um, adding some additional uh, internal dialogue, which I, I, th I felt was kind of missing in certain areas. Um, and that kind of thing. And then I've got one friend who's gonna do the proofreading for me, and then it's finally gonna be ready to go. And yes, it just, see, it, it does seem like it's taking forever because I'm not working on it for eight hours a day, every day. Um, I'm just kind of like, as, as I feel like it, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, for me, I need to kind of be in the right mindset to be doing the editing and stuff. Otherwise it does, because I've, I've done it where I've kind of forced myself a few times and then I go back and reread um, the areas I edited and I'm like, oh, what the heck was I thinking? Um, I wasn't happy with it at all. So I kind of need to be in the right zone um, for writing and editing so that it, the story unfolds properly um, and, and, and things. Because uh, I keep adding um, internal dialogue and, and other dialogue and like, hmm. you know, I, I change scenes around because I, I feel it might work better that way. But then, you know, if I'm in the wrong mood, I'll change a scene around and then look back on it later and like, that? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a process. Um, and obviously I have other things going on and, and stuff. I've still got my husband's business that I'm um, trying to build up um, and we're making progress on that front. Um, I still have my consulting even though um, I haven't been doing a lot of consulting um, recently. Um, I have a couple of potential projects um, coming up um, soon and so I'll probably be a lot busier um, going forward but I haven't been and it's been kind of nice <laughs> just kind of sitting around and um, getting to focus on doing other things. Um, playing a lot of uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, that's that's my latest video game that I've been um, uh, playing. I tried playing the earlier versions of Mass Effect because um, I, I really am obsessed with Dragon Age. Dragon Age is, is one of my biggest obsessions video game wise recently. Uh, recently, but when I first started playing three years ago, I think. Um, I think it was three years ago when I started getting into Dragon Age. Just before Dragon Age Inquisition came out, so whenever that was. Um, which, oh, I think that's three or four years now. But um, I knew Inquisition was coming out and EA Games was giving out um, Dragon Age Origins for free um, in anticipation to get people sucked into the storyline to, to want to get the third version of the game. So I picked up Dragon Age Origins and started playing that and was instantly addicted. <laughs> And so I've played through uh, a number of playthroughs now of all three um, versions of the game, all, all three parts of the series. And uh, that's where all my fan fiction writing goes. Um, I've written 40 um, fan fiction stories now, and I think it's 33 or 34 of them are Dragon Age related. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little obsessed, just, just a little bit. Um, and so, but Bioware, who makes Dragon Age, they also made Mass Effect. And I had tried getting into the Mass Effect series, but I don't know, it just never sucked me in. Uh, but now they've got the, the Dragon Age Andromeda, which is the newest game, and I noticed that they don't, they didn't name it Drag, um, Mass Effect 4, because they had Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, but this one is just Andromeda, because it's a whole new cast of characters, the same universe, and they do mention the characters that people are familiar with from um, the, the first three games. But you've got this group of, um, uh, I think some 100,000 people from Milky Way Galaxy who take off to the Andromeda Galaxy. And they're all in cryogenic sleep for 600 and some years, you know, getting from here to there, that kind of thing. Um, and so they, they leave, and, and um, apparently they leave um, our galaxy just before 
Mass Effect 3, um, the, the third game, um, um, storyline starts. So just before, because if you've played the games at all, and, and if you haven't started playing Andromeda yet, um, you know, I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but it's not that big of a spoiler, not really. Because uh, we knew that they left um, uh, the Milky Way galaxy and uh, they left around uh, the time frame of the first three games. So, uh, but yeah, they left just before what happened in Mass Effect 3. Um, and so they, they left, and it's 600 years later, so they don't really know what happened in the Milky Way galaxy since um, that happened. Uh, since since everything um, happened and, and I'm I have not played through Mass Effect 3 I kind of have an idea of Part of the storyline and part of who the antagonists are and everything but I never played it all the way through So I don't even know how it ends so I can't really spoil you on that because I don't know um, But anyway, but that's that's where they and with the Andromeda thing is like so you're I think with the first three games You got Commander Shepard is as your player character and you've got completely different characters in the in the new game so I gave it a try, um, hoping that I could get more sucked into the story, and this one actually has been sucking me in. Um, you get to explore all these different planets, um, and trying to find, you know, places to, to, to inhabit and, and settle in and everything, and, you know, obviously you've got some new enemies, and you've, you know, got some drama, and you've got some um, ancient technology that you're ex discovering that's really cool, and so it's actually really been sucking me. I I've I've heard a lot of people complain about the storylines, and 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 the game itself, and I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I will have to agree that the uh, that some of the romances are are somewhat disappointing because that's one of the. Uh, the highlights of the Bioware games is that you have are able to take your character and romance, you know, one of your squad mates and stuff uh, and things. And yeah, I, I, like my character, I would I would love to have uh, allowed him to romance. You know, there, there's a few other characters I would have loved to romance, but they won't allow it. They're like, oh no, no, sorry, we're not interested in you. Um, so I'm like. So I'm, I'm stuck with two. I have two options in terms of how I want to take my my, my storyline too. So there 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 could be more because <laughs> I have I, okay. I'll admit I, I like my gay storylines and I always play male characters and my male character only gets two other males to possibly romance and the one guy dumped me. <laughs> so I only have one. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I'm probably rambling way too much on that now, but uh, that's that's I've been doing a lot of that. So I've been I've been playing that game. I've been writing some fan fiction. I've been editing my novel, um, and just kind of keeping myself busy doing a, a whole bunch of other things. You know, I play trivia regularly now with my friends, uh, which is kind of uh, kind of fun. And, um, I have friends who come over and watch TV with me and stuff. So. Um, I'm, I'm never lacking for company or, or things to do um, if and when I need to, so which is kind of cool. But okay, I think that's enough rambling. Um, if you guys have any topics you would like me to touch on, um, you know, please leave a comment below and, and ask me questions and things because I'm, I'm more than happy to, like, if you want to want me to do a Q&A, you know, throw questions down there or throw a topic at me and, and things and, and let me know. And I'm more than happy to try and do some more videos. I just kind of haven't felt really inspired to, to do so. So, um, but I'm, I'm more than happy to if people have interest in, in things and want to see me ramble on something specific. <laughs> I should just call this a rambling channel. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for joining me, and this is probably more than long enough. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>